Hello everyone and welcome to this video. So in this video, I'm gonna give you a bit of an update on tech skills. So some core cloud skills, and also I'm gonna to touch on AI and ML. In fact, I'm gonna go into quite a bit of detail there. So I'm gonna talk about the top tech skills that have the most demand today, which roles you can aim for. We're gonna talk about how AI and ML skills fit into the landscape and also some recommended certification pathways and additional skills that you might need to get if you want to land a career both in cloud, in core cloud computing roles, the traditional ones that have been around for a long time, plus some of the new evolving roles in AI and machine learning. And then I'm going to talk quickly about how you can build a differentiated skill set. That's with the training that we offer. So firstly, what are the top five in-demand tech roles? Now, I've asked this question to people before on live sessions with many students in the audience, and a lot of people turned around and said, we think AI must be the number one skill set today. It's not. Cloud engineers and architects and cybersecurity specialists are number one and number two. In some reports, cybersecurity is number one, so it depends on what sources you're looking at. But these are the top roles. There's lots and lots of job opportunities here, and there's a lot of demand. So there's a shortage in having people with the right skills to fill these roles. Also, the good news here, especially up here with cloud engineers and architects, the cloud engineering piece, well, that's more of a junior role. You can have senior cloud engineers, of course, but there's lots of junior roles that are called cloud engineer. So that is a more junior skill set. So that's great for people who are coming into this industry or transitioning from an on premises skill set into the cloud, but at those sort of more junior to intermediate levels. Architects, a bit more senior, usually requires more experience, but very exciting role opportunities there as well. Thirdly, we have DevOps engineers, lots and lots of demand there. Fourth is data scientists and analysts becoming a bit more specialized here. Cybersecurity as well is a bit more specialized really than sort of cloud engineering or DevOps. So it does typically require a bit more experience to get those roles. Lastly, fifth is AI and ML specialists. So it is quite a long way down there. Now that may change over time, but I think also you've got to understand that there's just more jobs for cloud engineers than there are people at that more specialist level, which is where machine learning experts sit. So if we look at the landscape here, you've got the core cloud roles, okay? There are more of these. You've got cloud engineers, DevOps engineers, support specialists, solutions architects, DevOps engineers, network engineers, technical account managers, systems administrators, and many more roles. Above that, you have the more specialist roles. So here you have enterprise architects, lots of experience needed there, data analysts and specialists, application architects, cybersecurity, and of course, machine learning specialists as well. So definitely more experience required to take on these roles. And there are fewer of them. There's just more jobs in those core cloud roles versus the specialty ones. That's good news for any of you who are sort of transitioning from an existing skill set. Maybe you're not at that senior level yet. You just want to move into the cloud. Lots of job opportunities in this area here. Whereas if you are more senior and you have got more experience, you can start going for some of these more specialized roles by building the right skills uh, in the cloud with the particular skill sets that you need for those roles. So a little bit more about roles today. So traditional cloud roles are definitely evolving to incorporate the use and integration of AI and ML services. So really, even though on this page here, I'm telling you that machine learning specialists are more of a senior role, more of a specialized role, definitely requires, for example, knowledge of multiple programming languages, requires understanding about data engineering practices, database administration practices, analytics, tuning of machine learning models, very strong skill set required there. However, I'm not telling you that you shouldn't learn AI and ML because especially with the gen AI, that's being utilized by people in almost every role. DevOps engineers are using AI enhanced automation, AI for predictive analytics and enhanced performance optimization as well. Solutions architects are using AI integrated solutions enhanced decision-making capabilities using AI models and improving design efficiency. And developers, of course, are using code generation through gen AI models. I use it every day. I'm not even a very good developer, 
I use Gen AI now to write my own code for me because I just don't have the time um, to actually do it myself. Testing and debugging as well, of course, very good tools we can use there in the Gen AI world. And it can enhance code quality as well. Of course, it's not perfect. It might introduce security bugs. You have to have the right skills in order to be able to check your code. But you can utilize these models for generating the code and then testing, debugging, and making sure the quality is good. Real-time insights and adaptation as well. So I would say that no matter what role you are going into in the cloud, you want to have a skill set of Gen AI at least. You might not need to know machine learning to a great degree unless you're going into one of those more specialized roles. But Gen AI for sure. So you might want to learn services like Bedrock. You're going to want to know how to use services like ChatGPT, uh, GitHub Copilot, and more. In our live training, our boot camp, we teach those technologies to help people who are going into any role to know how to utilize Gen AI. We show our students how you can actually generate code, create project ideas, solve problems using Gen AI. So there's definitely a growing demand for these skills. So demand for AI and machine learning specialists is expected to grow by 40%. That's a WF report from last year. 70% of North American IT leaders say they're having a lot of difficulty filling roles. This comes from AWS. But really interestingly, AWS said that employers are willing to pay 40%, 47% more for AI-skilled IT professionals. That's a report on the AWS website. So that's a really interesting statistic because this is not necessarily experts who are specialized in machine learning. This is anyone who knows how to utilize AI to enhance their productivity. Companies will pay more, and it makes a lot of sense because you might be a lot more productive if you use these tools properly. So everybody should start learning them no matter what role you're going into. All job roles are gonna benefit from Gen AI, both from the perspective of it causing a big increase in the amount of demand for cloud services and a push towards the cloud for many businesses who are now utilizing the cloud in larger amounts than they were before because they're leveraging it for creating AI applications. That means more jobs, but then also, it means that we're going to be able to leverage these tools in jobs that we're already doing as well. So what are the recommended certification pathways? I'm gonna show you what we do in our bootcamp. So in terms of solutions architecture, the core certifications we recommend are cloud practitioner, solutions architect associate, and developer associate. So these three cover a very broad range. So we're starting at the foundations here. You're learning about what the cloud is, what the benefits are, about the cloud platform that AWS provides, the core AWS services, the billing models, that kind of stuff. In Solutions Architects Associate here, this is where you're going to go to another level of depth. So you have a broad coverage across a lot of different services and quite a decent amount of depth as well. Nowhere near as much as the pro level, but enough to really understand the cloud and lots of the different core services. That includes, by the way, machine learning services as well. Then the developer associate enhances that by going deeper on some particular services, but also including the DevOps tools. Now, even if you're a solutions architect, you're not in DevOps, you are going to be exposed to DevOps because most companies are utilizing CI, CD pipelines. So you're gonna to need to understand those tools. That's why I think the developer associate is very useful. Now, my pathway for DevOps engineer is actually the same because the core skill set is the same. It's what we specialize in after the this that actually matters. Lastly, for the AI ML specialist, here we have the solutions architect associate, the new data engineer associate, and then the machine learning engineer associate, which is not even available yet. So it's coming soon. We're gonna build this into our training programs, um, but at the moment, it's not released at the time of recording. Now, there are some additional skills for almost every job role. First one, Linux. This applies to every job role in the cloud. Linux is by far the most common operating system used in the cloud. Terraform, so for example, the certified Terraform associate, very useful certification to have for infrastructure as code. Python, very useful programming language. Now, obviously that depends where, you know, and I'd say to the, the amount of depth that you need to understand this really depends on which role. I would recommend that everybody in the cloud is 
has some kind of basic understanding of at least one programming language. So even if you're a solutions architect, if you're an application architect, of course you go to a lot, a lot more depth. If you're a developer, a lot more depth. If you're a DevOps engineer, you certainly need to have good programming skills. If you're an AI ML specialist, you're probably gonna to need to know multiple languages as well. Next up, we've got Kubernetes. Very useful, especially for DevOps, maybe the AI ML specialist for cloud engineers as well. Solutions architects could be exposed to it to a certain degree. This is the certified Kubernetes administrator certification as one example. And then the AI practitioner foundational. This is another one of the new exams, which is not even released yet from AWS. So these two exams here, the AI practitioner and the ML engineer associate, those are both new. Now, the reason I put it on the right hand side here is because I think it's going to apply to multiple pathways. I think this is going to be very relevant for virtually everybody who works in the cloud because so many companies are going to be leveraging Gen AI to some degree. So what do you need to get a job today in the industry? So I believe you need both certifications and hands-on skills across multiple technologies and platforms. Definitely not enough just to have certifications. You've got to have hands-on skills. You've got to be able to prove that you have the ability to do the job and you need multiple technologies and platforms as well. It's not just okay to have AWS skills. You've got to have some of those other ones as well. You need a portfolio of experience you can demonstrate to employers. If you've got years of experience in the industry, great. If not, you've got to build this. You also need to bypass the standard job application process. Don't just go and send out your resume to lots of companies. Very unlikely to be successful. There's a lot of competition out there today. So you've got to understand how you can bypass that process and get in front of the hiring managers or the recruiters at a personal one-to-one -one level and be able to demonstrate what you've done. There's a lot of social networking that you can do there. There's, um, there's ways that you can sort of bypass that process, get in front of those people, either by turning up in their social feeds, publishing articles and various activities like that. We teach our students in our boot camp to do exactly that. And then definitely AI and ML skills. Definitely the AI, I'll put the emphasis there. So for instance, the AI practitioner certification I just showed, when that is released, I recommend that most people who are working with AWS should get that certification. So definitely becoming very important and valuable. So I'll just finish off talking about what we do in terms of our Cloud Mastery Bootcamp program. So this is a program that uses live training as well as on-demand training. And we have something that we call the competency building framework. This is really our recipe, our methodology for making sure that people have the right skills, know how to get those skills in front of employers, and really prove that they have the ability to do the job. So it's really a career-based program. We start off with scenario-based learning, so learning how to build across different technologies in clouds. Then we go into challenge-based learning. This is where you actually assign you challenges and problems to solve, so you can build up that troubleshooting and problem-solving capability. And then putting it all together with some more advanced capstone projects where you actually build something quite complex that you can demonstrate to employers in various different ways. And then above all that, we have our Tech Career Accelerator program, which is where we help you through our career coaches to build a personal brand, build a portfolio, update your resume, and take on these techniques where we can help you to get in front of the employers and bypass those cues. Underneath all of that, we have the technology skills and certifications. We see these just as the foundation. For most people, that's all they do. They do the technology skills and certifications. They learn that then they just start sending their resume out and it just does not work. So we build those skills. We're adding in the machine learning and AI so we can make sure that we incorporate all of these different skill sets that people need today. We're already teaching Gen AI, so we already do that in the training, but now we'll, of course, integrate some of these certifications as well so that people can really build out their experience. If you're interested in our bootcamp program, check the description of this video. You will find some links and information there. And I hope this video is useful.